This is Curtis coming at you from Ace Barrett Studios once again to cover uh, week four of the 2021 NFL season. Going to do a little film study here today on the Miami Dolphins offense to lay blame. Now, I spoke in another video, uh, I believe the Ross effect, how there are three stages of an NFL regime. First one is the happy stage where everything's coming together. No matter what happens, life is good, every mistake is really a winning move, and then you get to the middle ground where you're, you're on the verge of either making it or entering the third stage. And those first two stages is the way of the warrior. There's got to be loyalty, hierarchy, I went through all those. But the third stage is the sinking of the ship. It's when the rats start getting off, narratives start flying, everybody is trying to create uh, a look for themselves that, me, that, that, that says that they're not at fault. But in the same time, they are also putting narratives out on other people to make it look like it. they're the ones that made the mistakes that screwed it all up. And that's really where we're on the verge of that third stage. We're in the second stage, but the ship is starting ahead into that third stage and narratives are shooting off this thing like rats off a sinking ship. And the narrative that we got right now, not to say it's right or wrong, but a narrative we have right now is Brian Flores can't coach. We're seeing that obviously the defense is an all world. There's issues there that we can see. And obviously there's huge issues on offense. And this has to come back to the doorstep of Brian Flores. And I don't think you can say that it can't, but to the degree What's the context? What's the true level of culpability? And that's kind of what I want to go over here in the film study. And the film study will be the Miami Dolphins offense through the first half of the game. And I want you to put yourselves in the shoes of the defense on the sidelines looking at this offense. And as you gauge the offense, kind of consider the situation you're in and how it's affecting you. Okay, so... The thing that I really want you to focus on is A, the offense as it, as it unfolds. And when we get to the end of the film study, ask yourself, is the defense truly responsible? Is it underperforming? And should the weight be on Flores. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at the film. All right, the Dolphins open up after their four-yard run, which is a nice run, on second and six. First problem, Brissett's read is to the left, and look at the two route combinations right here. They're jammed up side by side. This is never a good play design. So either the receivers ran the wrong route or the play was designed improperly. You're just trying to pick up a first down, a simple out, slant, comeback, anything would have had this play available. Now, Brissett feels a little bit of pressure and decides to roll out, and he picks up the first down, which is a good thing. But this is outside of the initial play design, and that, that was because it was flawed to begin with in some way, either the receivers or the design itself. So on a third and one, they come back to a play action, and again, Brissett has a wide open tight end for the first down. This is wide open. But he doesn't set and throw. Instead, he, he decides to, you know, get out of the dodge, and he picks up the first down, and it looks good for him. But again, the play was messed up from the beginning. Now here, Shaheen, they like to put him in line instead of on the outside and smile the outside instead of in line. He gets blown up, and Brown makes a play out of it, you know, and this looks great in the stat sheet, but the play design was flawed. And this was from a player overachieving, which is not the, what you want to have build your consistency off here. So again, you can see Jackson put his hands to the face. Uh, Eichenberg, you know, he definitely missed his block there. So Brissett gets out, throws the ball. I don't know if he's meant to throw it uh, here to uh, Fuller, but whatever, big play nullified by a penalty. All right, so now you're in third and 14. Instead of a big play, you're third and 14. 
And instantly, Jackson needs help. He gets beat. Brissett has to roll out. You see here, he's holding in. Jackson's holding again. This is what he does. He holds. This is why he had a PFF grade of 35 in pass block. So then you get a muff punt, pull back on the 27. Okay? You have an opportunity here. And so you open up with a play action. And the pl first play of this critical drive is basically a two-man rat with max protect. Why do you have max protect? Because you don't trust your lineman to block. And that, that's a bad sign. These, these, these two-man routes almost never work. It, it always comes to some leak play to the running back, which you see here. And this would have ended up being like a two-yard gain or something. They get lucky with a flag. You know, they get lucky with a flag here. So on first down, first and five, they come from shotgun. And, you know, there's nothing inherently wrong with this. But they got a backup center. Why not just run the football, be more conventional, more, you know. You just want to get five yards for the first down. That's the goal. So a bad muff snap here. So it was a bad snap. I mean, Brissett could have got his hands on it. Brissett did a good job of getting the ball, throwing it away. So now you're in second and five. The play call's not bad, but the play call with the defense in front of you is not good. You've got nine, eight guys in the box with one guy on the perimeter. You have trouble blocking. You have the best blockers in the world. You don't have really run blocking tight ends. You have one or two players that are struggling in run, uh, pass block, uh, run block, and you don't audible out of this. This is what you call. And so you see right here, Brown he decides to cut up because Jackson gets beat. There's no real push here. You can see that. I like to have seen him break it out to the left side instead of cut it back. I think he, he could have done a little bit better, you know. But I guess he saw uh, Jackson's guys getting beat. But, you know, so now you get into here and you get like one or two yards. So now you're in third and three. Critical drive. You just got a muff pump back. This is really your opening drive. Uh, must need win. You need three yards. But you call three, really four vertical routes with one underneath. Look at this. This is what you call. No comebacks, no slants, no timing routes, no ins, no outs. Everybody's running a vertical. This makes no sense. This is poor play design. And maybe we're second taking off, but this is poor play design. Look at this. Poor play call and poor, poor play design considering the situation. Now you're at the end of the first quarter. Your defense has held the team to zero. You're on first and ten, and what do you call? You run your play action with your two-man routes again, you know, and what do you get out of it? Nobody's open. You got the leaker, you know, running back underneath. So Brissett comes back. He's got the tight end open underneath right here. Look at all the distance he has. Throw that football, pick up two or three yards. Then you're in, you know, third down and one, third down and two, or maybe you can pick up the first. Instead, he, he looks off the receiver for some reason. I don't know, maybe because he feels pressure from Jackson's side. He breaks out and, again, is able to pick up yardage on the run and pick up the first down. It looks good on the stat sheet, but it just wasn't a successful play. So now you're in first and 10, and you run a nice run inside. And you notice, too, the tight ends succeed more on their blocks when they're movement blocks. The wham blocks, the gig, they have leverage in their direction, but when it's not in a direction, it doesn't seem to go their way. Don't know why, they don't call that more. Uh, this is a nice play. Waddle gets it out. He makes a nice move here. There was, this was a timing play. Very rare to see from this offense. Again, the play action, you know, Jackson's getting help, but Eichenberg doesn't. Jackson's in second year, and he's an 18th pick. Eichenberg's in his rookie season. He's a second round pick. He doesn't get help. We have to dump it off, leak play like we always do. Nice play by Ahmed. Now you're in second and two. This is a gimme first down unless you screw it up. So what do they do? They screw it up. You have eight men in the box. Again, you have Shaheen as the inline blocker. Again, you have Smythe playing on the perimeter. Again, and you run the football. And you see Shaheen here getting blown up. 
And Ahmed still should have just either taken it straight ahead or to the outside. Didn't like his read on this one, and that was just that was bad. So you lost two yards. And you can see right here, Ahmed should not have cut it back. He should have just gone straight ahead, at least got to the line of scrimmage, which maybe he could have. Jackson actually had a pretty decent block, but I think he got nervous. That was a bad run by Ahmed. So now you're in third and four. Again, look at this. Look at Jackson holding again. Brissett, and then he bails out, makes a nice throw, and you get the first down, but again, the play is good because it, it succeeded outside the play design. See right here again, look at his hold. I mean, this is what he does all day long. They can call holding calls on this guy all day. All day. So, again, you see some nice moving blocks here. You got the tight end on the move. This is a successful uh, style for the blocking. Now, again, you're in a critical second down. Second down at about five-ish. But look at the box. Look how many people. You got seven guys in the box. And you run the football. There's no audible out. You run the football. And uh, Mans gets beat. Jackson gets beat. And that's a dead play. That puts you in third and long. But there's no sense of flexibility by this offense. There's no audible. There's no adjustments. There's nothing. It's just, we got the play. Here you go. So now you're in third and seven. And Mans occupied to the left, lets the running back have to pick up the rusher solo, which is never a winner. And Eichenberg never gets help. Almost never. Gets beat. And that's it. But the failure of this play happened on, on play one, play two. So you're back to first down again. And, you know, this is a, this is a decent play call. You can see, look, at the, the secondary is playing off. They do an inside run zone. And, a, and there's Shaheen, you know, making a second cheap block. Could have got more out of it, but he missed the block. Now, big drive, eight minutes, second and six. Parker's wide open, and the throw is way off. Brissett misses the easy catch and throw, which happens. Unfortunately, it happens back to back. Third and six now. I mean, you have, you have so much space underneath on the bottom with Parker, but you come back to the top with Fuller, and Fuller has a nice stop and come back, and the ball is just thrown. He's wide open. This is two easy first downs that were thrown away. So then... The defense makes the stop again, and you get the offsides by Phillips. How can you lay it all on the defense? This offense has many, many issues. All right, so as you go through that tape, you could see there was plenty of blame to lay around. You could see the coaches, all three of them, really didn't deliver on their end, or, you know, enough. You'd see that the offensive line didn't deliver on its end. But for the most part, it really focused on one particular player. And you can see the quarterback as well did not deliver. This was an entire situation. But ask yourself, is this the fault of the defense? Is this the fault of Brian Flores? Did Brian Flores draft Jackson? Maybe he's putting him in too long. I don't know. Did Brian Flores bring in Brissett? Well, I'm sure he had a piece of it. But was he involved in the exile of Fitzpatrick? Did Brian Flores have ownership totally of these three offensive coordinators? Did he tell Gailey to get out along with Marshall? 
Well, you could check my other video, uh, Is Brian Flores a Coach Cutter, to really get the full context of it. And for me, it's pretty clear. This defense put Miami in position. Special teams put the Miami offense in position. Flores has done a good job coaching up his staff on defense of taking players. Not all of them. Look at Noah. I think he had a big part in picking Noah. Noah's a big letdown. But, you know, you strike out. That's just reality. You know, that's a re what, what about Needham? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you don't – you struck out on Noah so far. Got to let it play out. But you nailed Needham. You nailed Davis. So it's a total package. But when you lay out the total package, how many hits on defense were there compared to the hits on offense? So, again, was this the staff that Flores wanted or was this the best he could get? Was this the direction Flores intended or was this the direction that he was steered into? You know, it's for you to, to, to gauge. I'm not saying Flores is, has no culpability, but you can see here. As far as his end, his mistakes are here, and his achievements are here. Uh, I, I want, want to apologize. apologize. Last, Last time, time I made a dumb, dumb monkey mistake. mistake. And that was that I said that we had our first round pick, and if we do poorly, you know, we can get a good draft. I totally thought we gave away the 49ers first round draft pick. I didn't think it would be dumb enough to give around give out our first round draft pick for Waddle. But I have to apologize. Thank you for those holding me accountable. Next time I will be better with better information. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little film study. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Comments mean the most. I'm getting, I got to a lot of comments, gonna get to some more today. Feel a lot more energized, a little, little time to relax and some other things. Uh, so I'm, I'm pumped to get to those comments. Subscriptions and likes help us with our Google overlords, keeps us in business. I like that too. And I want to thank, give a shout out to Ace Barrett, our sponsor. They want to let you know with their world class software, you can get it on the action with friends, family, co workers, uh, schoolmates, anyone you know. As a local bookie, they're the best. They keep, they're the ones that make this happen. Really, it is. And you, as well as viewers, again, I want to apologize for my. Poor information. I will strive to be better. I thank you for uh, everything. This is Curtis. Catch you next time. Be well.